Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, thank you for joining me, those that can. I appreciate the summer holidays. And that's why uh, this presentation I'm running throughout August. The next one is going to be a week on Friday. That's Friday the 20th um, at uh, one o'clock. And so, yeah, if you can't join me today or you're joining late and you'd like to join a live one so you can ask questions, things like that, the next one is going to be uh, Friday the 20th. I'm just going to talk a bit just um, to allow people to join and uh, to get comfortable. Uh, this week, it's a quite, it's a bit of a quiet week in terms of work. Uh, the the girls have uh, gone away. My wife and daughter are away for a few days, and uh, so it's just me and the boys. Well, I say boys. The eldest is normally at work. Uh, the middle son is often out with his friends. So this morning, uh, I've been playing um, that doctor game where you try and get the the um, small the small items out of the body. Um, with my youngest son and then uh, playing frustration with them. He wanted to play Cluedo, but uh, that's not a game you can play with just two players. So I've been doing that amongst um, work, answering emails and things like that. The main job I got in the minute is a Trello installation. Um, we're talking a lot about process maps today and something that Trello is really good at is converting those process maps into workflows. And if you get the automation right, there's a lot, quite a lot of power, powerful things you can do with it. And merging Trello with Zapier means that you can send emails automatically, you can um, send, uh, you can fill out Excel spreadsheets or Google spreadsheets. There's a, a, quite a lot of powerful things you can do with Zapier. Trello, um, just by putting your process maps in there as a process flow. So today, the reason why um, you're here, the reason why I'm here, is going to be talking um, again about why process maps should be the foundation of your business, of any business. And we're going to go through that in a bit of details. But let's start off with a bit about myself. I'm Ian Wander, uh, Director of Wander Technical Solutions. And WTS, we're business support. We're here to support your business through times of growth, but also um, the new moniker is that we bring order to chaos. So what does that mean? Well, we provide organizational support to make sure that your business is set up in a way that the people within it have got um, access to the right information, um, the right hierarchy so that, um, as we talked a bit about today, if you decide to take a holiday from your business, which you absolutely should be able to do, that the business doesn't collapse in your absence, that uh, things go on just as if you were there uh, for short periods of time. Processes, <laughs> massive important part of any business. We be talking about, a lot about process, Matt, but processes in general, as I said, one of my main uh, tasks I'm doing at the minute is a trail installation. And that is all about trying to put processes into a process flow so that key items of your business are missed. And so you've got checklists that are um, covering the important elements. Planning. Um, planning is a critical part um, and not too much in terms of what you should plan because that's going to be bespoke to your business and there's a lot of experts out there. But what I look at is the how you should plan. And so you've got that long-term goal. How are you making sure that long-term goal isn't forgotten in the, your day-to-day -day business? How are you making sure that um, you've, you've got the focus so that you get the client work done, you get the marketing done, but you're also moving towards those long-term goals? Systems is a key part to any process. And um, in the modern world, we've got so many applications and there's so many different um, unique elements. You've got CRMs out there, you've got booking systems, you've got um, ERPs, you've got so many options out there. And you can get to the point where you're spending a lot on systems that do lots of little things, but are you really using them efficiently? Are they all really um suitable to your business, fit for purpose. 
And I do a lot of looking at which systems um, maybe you can buy to cut your costs. And is there something bespoke you can look at so that you're not paying a monthly cost so that you pay a fixed amount for a system that's made just for you? And then you can just build on that. And administration. I've got a background in document control. And so I know a lot about administration and we can either provide direct support uh, for um, for fixed projects or we can provide automation to try and cut down the amount of administration because a lot of the focus that I'm doing is to um, try and allow you to do what you're an expert in. A lot of running a business isn't about the thing we start off with. I'm doing marketing, I'm doing sales, I'm doing quotes when I really want to help people. Um, and so I know that there's a lot of things outside of the core structure of the business that is needed to be done. And the amount of that we can minimize, automate, um, move off to VAs if that's a practical element, the more you can focus on what you're an expert in and the more time you can spend moving your business forward. But why listen to me? Well, I have a Bachelor of Science, a first class degree in management of engineering technologies. But more importantly, I have 15 years um, experience in business improvements. Now, why do I fixate on this having a strong foundation for business? Because there are two options. You can have a business built ad hoc where you do something, you learn something, you build on it, and over a period of time, you just keep building on things. And both will lead to growth, whether you have that strong foundation or that ad hoc, you know, you're gonna have growth on both sides. The thing is that with a strong foundation, you can, that you can make something scalable, you can get that continued growth. When you've got that ad hoc um, design of business, you can often, a majority of the time, get to a point where that growth is limited. And that usually happens when your business is busy and you're checking on staff to make sure that they're doing what they meant to be doing. You're doing a lot of firefighting. You're doing a lot of circular things that repeat day in, day out that aren't growing your business. You're not doing what you're an expert in. You're doing a lot of the, just the single management of the business because the foundations weren't there in the first place. And that leads to you being extremely busy, the business being chaotic, and that isn't sustainable. And that growth will end and the business will eventually uh, collapse or you'll just exhaust yourself. You'll get stressed and you know, that, the whole thing is that I want people to enjoy what they do. We, we have to work for the majority of our lives. and We should be spending that time working on something that we enjoy and something we can feel proud of at the end of the day. So that strong foundation will allow you to have that growth, scalability, and that continued growth and that continued enjoyment in the work that you do. So process maps. I mentioned this a lot, but what is a process map? It's a key question that's asked. A process map is a flow of activities and data. On a very basic level, we're talking about a series of steps that take you from a starting point to an end point. A series of steps that dictate how key functions of your business happen, whether that's the core function of whatever your business is around about, but also the marketing, the sales, the invoicing, all those will have a process connected to it. As I mentioned, you're going to have a starting point. You're going to have some identifier inputs, things that go into your business that are, um, you know, resources, people, information. They're going to be some inputs that's going to go in. You're going to have some decisions. Now here, I have got binary decision points. I will touch on that very briefly after this to explain what I mean by that. And you've got some fixed you've got some output. Now these aren't the final, this isn't the final um, element. The one mean by fixed outputs is these are the elements that go towards the final product. Be that um, element if you're in a, a production role and there are things that go together at the end, There's, there'll be various elements that should do that. But even in the service industry, if you imagine a report, you've got various different things that go into that report. 
Each of those are going to be outputs in themselves that then get combined at the end to make the final report. And you've got steps. Steps are a key part of any process map because they explain what what to do, followed by what and the order that you do things in. But what you'll find is that understanding the decision points and understanding what the inputs and outputs are will help you identify what those steps are. And then you get to an end point. What we've got here is some standard shapes that you'll see on a process map if I've made one for you. These standard shapes aren't the beyond end all. If you're making a professional process map, absolutely, you're gonna to have to um, use some shapes. So if you're just doing a process map for your business and you just wanna start off, the starting is the important part. The, the building, what it looks like, as long as you understand it, isn't, isn't the key. What we often say to people is start with the whiteboard. If you've got some post-it notes, brilliant. Add each step on as a post-it note and the questions, and then you can move things around. And that way, you know, you're not just, um, you're not fixed to try and get a computer program to try and work out how you're working it. You can do it more creatively. Creatively, I'm sure, I'm sure that's not a word. But anyway, onto the... Um, binary decision points. Uh, got it on the, on the previous slide and I just want to touch on what I mean by binary decision points. Here we've got a, a statement that um, could come across when someone's explained to me what they want in their process map. This is say the client can choose between metal, hardwood and plastic. And some people could put this in a process map like this. Material, what material do the client select? Metal follows some steps, hardwood follows some other steps, plastic follows some other steps. You won't see this on any process map that I do. What I try and do is get everything to a binary decision point. And by binary, it just means two options, that yes, no, that stop, go, that, you know, it's two options. Anyone that's done any programming will come across this a lot. It's the, you know, the if statements. Now, why is that important? Because initially it could look very similar to the other one, just with more steps. Do the client select metal? Yes, step A, no. Do the client select hardwood? Yes, step B, no. Do the client select plastic? Yes, step C. The thing is that this actually opens up a fourth option. What happens if the client doesn't select any of those options? Well, you could say, well, these are the only options that we have. And so the client has to select one of these. Well, that's feedback. That's a that's a step that you feed back to the customer saying, please select for one of our three, that feedback into the top question. Or you could say, well, actually, we would then look at what the material they would like, and then we'd look at which one is the most, um, the closest that does what they're wanting it to do. Again, you've got some steps there, you've got some discussions with the customer, you've got some decisions to make, which then will lead back into these three. Or you could say, well, actually, yeah, we do, we can use a bespoke material. And if we use a bespoke material, then there's some other decisions, there's some other selections that we have to do, and it's more complex. But again, that is a series of other steps. And this is a key thing we're going to come on to with process maps that having the, the availability, having the options of, uh, of knowing that there is a fourth, uh, knowing there's a fourth option there means that we're not just limiting the process map to what you think the business is doing, but we're actually um, opening it up to what the, process, what the business is actually doing. When you're sole owner of a business, if something um, out the ordinary happens, then you will rely on your experience. It's not something that you often think about in you know in a detailed sort of way. It's something that just happens. Something out the ordinary happens, you fall back in your experience, you do something. The moment that you start opening your business up, so that you're expanding, so you're using a VA, or you've got staff, uh, you're starting to bring staff into your business, they do not have that experience that you have. They do not have that innate ability because they're not you, they don't have your business, to suddenly just rely on the experience and go, this is what I'd like to do. And that's where the process map becomes powerful because being able to identify that there is a fourth option here 
being able to dictate what that what to do at that fourth option means that your experiences will start to be um, included in the process map and then again that allows you to step away from the business for those short periods of time such as you know in august when we're going holidays and things like that and that's something that's not always practical So the main thing we're looking at today is why are process maps essential? Okay, I've got a course uh, coming up in September from the 20th to 24th, where I'll be going through how to make those process maps, how to identify what those key questions are. But before you get to that point, it's obvious it's, it's important for you to understand why process maps are essential, why they're one of those foundation stones that we talked about earlier. And for this, we need to follow the story of either Bob or Bobby. And today, just because I can, I'm going to pick Bobby. And we're going to say that Bobby is going to make some things up. I'm going to make say that Bobby's 29. I'm going to say that Bobby is... Uh, she's got a, let's think, this is always easier when you're in a room with people, you can start throwing out questions, but uh, just for today, we're going to say that Bobby got a degree while working in an office. And we're going to say that she's going to offer a service and she's going to offer remote document control. So she's going to take documents off businesses, scan them, um, save them. She's going to do some administration, maybe pull some reports together. She's going to basically take some of the administration um, roles off businesses, but also on focused on document control and controlling the location of documents, controlling the security of documents. She's going to do that remotely. Now we've got some basic facts here about Bobby, about where what she's doing. We could talk about her childhood. We could talk about her current family situation. We could talk about some of her goals, where she goes on the holidays, but. The main thing is to note that Bobby is a unique individual. Bobby isn't the same as anyone else, even someone else doing the same sort of business. Bobby is unique and she's, you know, she's just uh, deciding to open up her own business to do this element that she wants to do herself, but everything about her is unique. Now, when she was working in the office and she was doing documents, control there were steps that she would follow you know there'll be steps in terms of um, how to identify what the document is there'll be steps in terms of the security of the document make sure that there's the right sign off things like that and these would be steps that she'd be doing day in day out but she's going solo and because she's going solo there are elements that she thinks that she can do better that she didn't do in the office, that she thinks that she can add to the whole uh, process to actually make it make it more worthwhile as, as a standalone process. But this isn't written down. Bobby isn't uh, writing down her processes and mapping them out like this. This is all inside Bobby's head. You know, she knows how she did them before and she knows what, out that she wants to change, enhance, and move things forward. And these are just processes that are inside her mind. As we mentioned earlier, there are the core functions, but as anyone that starts a new business, there's functions that aren't that core element. There's the marketing, there's the finance side, there's the sales side. There's, there's all sorts of things that sit outside that. Bobby doesn't have experience in those, so she's gone on some training courses. She's joined some groups that can help her um, identify, you know, the best way of doing some of these things. And so with that, you know, she's going to have some other processes 
um, connected with us. And they could be mainly based on training that she's done. But again, she's her own unique individual. She will bring her own ideas to them. You know, it's not like she's going to just look at the marketing training and go, I'm going to follow that to the exact letter because that's the only way to do it. Though she could go, okay, excellent training, but I'm going to do this because I think that'll work better for me. And she might do more than one training. So she might take one thing from one training session, something from the other training session, and again with her own unique elements. Important to note, as mentioned before, these are just ideas inside her head. Sure, with the training, there are bound to be notes that she's written down, you know, there'll be some uh, um, some ad hoc um, things that she's, you know, she'll want to fall back on to check on occasions, but they're not going to be in a formal process map. They're just going to be notes to remind herself things that she's not comfortable with that she hasn't done before so that she can, you know, move that forward. Bobby is successful and 18 months later, she's had, she has had some missteps, but she also has learned um, she's had some successes. And from both the missteps and the successes, she's learned quite quite a lot. And over those 18 months, her processes are going to morph. They're going to, she's going to add steps, take away steps, impart an entire new section into, into what, what she does because she'll be learning on the job. This is obviously different to experience that she had in the office because this is it's particular to her business, to how she's been running it, to how she wants to run it, to how it's currently running it. And because she's successful, she's actually going to bring three people in to help her expand this document control business that she's got. Now, we're going to leave Bobby very briefly um, and her three new employees. Going to get used to do something. Um, I'm assuming you've all drawn whether that was um, when you were five year old and you had a picture put on the fridge or maybe you're a professional and art is something that you do. And I'm going to get commission you to draw me a picture. I'm going to give you a series of instructions and I want you to put on a piece of paper. Uh, so if you, if you haven't got a piece of paper uh, and for notes already, uh, this is time to get one. And I'm going to give you a series of instructions and I'm going to get, yeah, ask you to write down what you think I'm asking you to do. Afterwards, I will then show you what those instructions should have got and then we'll have a, a, a discussion about that. So I want you to start off with a horizontal line about two thirds of the page, about one third from the, uh, one third from the top. Just a horizontal line across the page. On the horizontal line, I would like you to draw a rectangle. Just a rectangle on the horizontal line. This week, uh, Latte and Live used this in their networking session, which I was extremely, extremely proud of um, that uh, this, this technique which I'm going through is, uh, is expanding out. So uh, if you haven't, uh, become part of Latte and Live. I suggest you look at the for the Small Business Network on Facebook or Latte and Live on um, on the internet and have a look. Um, it's run by Jen, who is uh, Jen and Rob, who are fantastic. So on the, we've got your horizontal line. You've got your rectangle. Either side of the, that, I want you to draw a triangle. So either side of that rectangle, uh, triangle. So you should end it with two triangles on the horizontal line, either side of your rectangle. Now, between those triangles, I want you to draw a semicircle. So that should be on the rectangle, between your triangles, a semicircle. circle 
my training, um, as you'll see for those that joined me in September, I try not to talk at people over a long period of time. I always try to incorporate elements like this, which are a bit more fun and interactive in person. These, these sessions are fantastic. Unfortunately, we can't do that. So at the bottom of the page, to about halfway up, I want you to draw a trapezium. If you can't remember what trapezium is, it's like a triangle without the top, and just a little bit cheating, just like that. So a trapezium, that's a triangle without the top, going up to about halfway up the page. Now, on the top of that trapezium, I want you to draw another rectangle. Just at the top of the trapezium, where you, if you imagine where the triangle point would be, replace that triangle point uh, with a rectangle. Now, at the top of that rectangle, so imagine where the points are, spreading outwards to the edge of the page, some curvy lines, almost like, but not quite, like eyebrows, just coming from the top of that rectangle to the edge of the page, some, some wavy lines, almost like eyebrows, but not quite. taken tomorrow completely off work to take the boys out they'll be really good in terms of allowing me to do some work obviously i did a bit of playing with the youngest one this morning but generally you know it's uh, be really good so if you imagine that top of that rectangle and you've got your trapezium if you draw a line from the top of that rectangle and down so it's almost power parallel parallel if i can get my teeth in almost parallel with the trapezium sides so you've got two lines coming down from that rectangle to the bottom of the page almost ish parallel to the trapezium Right, now things start getting complicated depending on what you've got on the page already. So where you got those parallel lines which you just drew, a series of thin vertical rectangles following them about five on each side. Thin rectangles either side of your parallel lines that's parallel to each trapezium. So imagine how difficult this is with it, with a blank piece of paper. Imagine if you were new to a business and you were coming in and someone will give you instructions and you had very little idea of how the business functioned or what your overall role in that business was. Just like this. Now I want you to top those thin vertical um, rectangles with circles. Not just any circles, you know, be creative, make them bumpy circles. I had this experience about 17 years ago, walking into a business, uh, being told something, and then the person that was meant to be training me um, got called off to a meeting that ended up taking uh, 90 minutes. Uh, they told us everything apart from the my login details for the computer. Now then, very nearly finished. Between those two rectangles, 
I want you to draw a, so you've got the rectangle at the top on the part on your house outline, you've got your rectangle underneath on your trapezium. Between those, I want you to draw a semicircle. A semicircle. And I want you to top that semicircle once you've done that with a triangle. Being my first office job, I had no idea what was expected. I thought I was about to get fired after 90 minutes of sitting the same on a computer going, uh, what do I do? What do I do? And the person came back and said, have you done that? And I was like, no. And they're like, oh, I forgot to give you this. And uh, yeah, that was a interesting start to any, uh, any office work. But let's put you out your misery and let's show you what you should have drawn. I'm going to follow the exact same instructions I gave yourselves. So you've got that horizontal line across the middle and we topped it with a rectangle. Either side of that rectangle, we had triangles. In between the triangles on top of the rectangle, we had a semicircle. We had the trapezium, which I cheated to show you what, what you were looking at. But then we topped that trapezium with a rectangle. Coming off the top of the rectangle, we have some wavy lines, almost like eyebrows, but not quite. But coming also off the top of that rectangle, almost parallel to, almost parallel to the uh, trapezium, we had some lines. Either side of that, we had some thin vertical rectangles coming up the side of the parallel line. And we topped them with circles, but because we've been creative, I said some bumpy circles. In between the two rectangles, so we've got the rectangle at the top of the result line and the one on top of the trapezium, a semicircle topped with a triangle. Now, how many of you got that? <laughs> how many people realised that this was what they were drawing? Now, why didn't we get that? Why didn't we get close to this? Was it the instructions I said? Was it my assumptions um, of your understanding? Was it the level of detail that I didn't give? I didn't mention about the size of the rectangles that was at the middle there. Or was it, <coughs> or was it just the fact that I didn't give you any sort of process? I didn't give you, I just gave you a blank piece of paper and expected some tel telepathic understanding between us. The thing is that verbal communication is limited and this is particularly important when it comes to training. When you're training somebody, if you're just sitting there and you're giving them verbal instructions, those verbal instructions will not give them the, the picture that you're trying to paint. No need that. If somebody's new into an industry, so they're going into accounting or engineering or medical, whatever it is, if they're going new into an industry, they won't know all the terminologies. They won't know all of the all the nuances of that particular industry. Because of that, you might not want to use words like mountain, boat, waterfalls, sunset, trees, because they might not have that nuance. But again, that makes it even more difficult for them to understand what it is that they're aiming at. Then the other major downfall you've got with verbal uh, training is your understanding of what's important won't be their understanding of what's important. So you can sit there, go through some instructions with them. Uh, they could write some notes. You could leave them thinking that they're going to get on and finish whatever it is. And you come back and find that what they've done isn't anywhere close to what you expected. That be because their takeaway from that training won't be the same as yours. And process maps will remove all of that frustration. Process maps allow you to um, include 
what you feel is important, what you know is important, not just what you feel, what you know is important for your business. Process maps will allow you to um, dictate what those notes actually are. Now, I'm not saying get rid of the verbal communication. Verbal communication is absolutely vital. It's absolute, verbal communication is absolutely vital to uh, getting that understanding to get that because it's got to be bespoke to the person that you're training. But the process map is something that must be an element to that training so that you can say, OK, I've explained all this. Here are the steps to follow. When you come back, you can have the expectation that they follow those steps. And if you're not there, obviously not the first day you're training somebody, but if you're not there, they've got something to fall back on to understand what it is that they should be doing. So the third reason why process maps are essential is for training. As we mentioned right at the beginning about putting your experiences into the process map for those non-standard elements. You know what you're doing in the business and you know what you do at certain points. People working for you, be that VA, be that new staff, don't have that. And that, that process map, that training, is absolutely vital to, to, to get across your experience, to get across your understanding, but also get across what you know is important and makes your business successful. So let's go back to Bobby. We left her with her expanding business. And Bobby understanding about the, the power of process maps or training has come to WTS and asked us to make her process maps for her. Now, when we make her process maps, we're not going to know about what those colours are in terms of her past experience, her unique ideas, her current um, experience. We're just going to be writing down the process maps as they're presented, as we understand that the business functions. Now, several things are going to happen when we um, write the process map down. The first thing is that despite the fact these are all the ideas that's been inside Bobby's head and she's developed them and worked on them, she's never actually seen the process that the business goes through. That again, there are always just ideas in her head. Immediately, she now gets a top level view of her business. And... She knows her business, she knows her business and, um, so inside and out, and she'll be able to identify very quickly where there are weaknesses. And so there'll be things in her business where she goes, well, actually, this is how we do it, but look at it now, I think we can do it more efficiently. I think we do this better. I think we can improve the quality for the customer. So changing the perspective from being inside the process to the firefighting to the getting through the client work to seeing the processes from a top level down will allow the business owner, Bobby in this case, to understand where the business weaknesses are themselves. Second thing happens is the person helping making the process maps will ask questions. Obviously, I would like that to be WTS for everyone listening to this, but anyone independent within or without the business can ask questions of what happens if. Now, that what happens if could be a, that's never happened. I can't even imagine that ever happening. Fine, we will we'll put the process map. See Bobby. If this does happen, which we never expect to happen, see Bobby, and then if that does happen, then they know that they need to see you for your experience to understand where they want to take things. Or they could say, well, that did happen last year, actually, once. And what we did then is this. But if I did again, I'd like this to happen. And again, we're starting to detail there how the business is functioning, how the business is being put together. So from there, you can use the process maps within the business. Process maps generated, Bobby's going to start seeing improvements. A person that generated is going to come and ask questions. 
But as soon as you start training people on it, they are also going to bring input. Their input might be, at my last place, I did this. And Bobby's answer might be, yeah, but here we do this. But it might be that they come up with the idea that Bobby hasn't seen because Bobby hasn't been everywhere. None mm -hmm. of us has had every experience possible. And Bobby may go, that's an interesting idea. That's something we'll consider. Again, because somebody can physically see the process map, physically see how it works, how the business functions, they can question how the business functions. Someone sits and explains something to you and they say you do this, they do this, do they do this. You don't get the sense of the other alternatives, the other options. Businesses produce KPIs. And so, for example, you'll have your, yeah, your cash flow and you can see which month you have certain cash flow and you make decisions for the following year based on that, decisions on the following weeks based on how past uh, performances have gone, depending on which product line. Same with marketing, does Facebook work, LinkedIn, you've got your marketing KPI. Process maps work the exact same for the efficiency of your business. They allow you to visualize how the business functions and then through different revision controls you can see how the business has developed. If you're bringing in a new system, for example, a new CRM, a new, a, new, um, a new marketing piece of software, you can then look at visually how that might impact your uh, process. So you can have a draft process map that will compare your current with the potential future. You can see how those impacts before you make the decision. Again, it's about giving you the information that you need to help your business move on, just as any other KPI process maps will allow you to do that. So with, with all this, the process maps are going to change. People are going to bring in new steps. There's going to be steps taken out. There's going to be some new efficiencies. The process maps are going to change, and process maps should change. Businesses should never stay still. There's the continuous improvement element, which should always be uh, part of a business. But you've got the documented evidence now of this is when we first made the process map. This is how it looked. These are the steps we took. And if you have a misstep, you can go back to a previous process. You don't always have to just rely and trust that uh, this didn't work. So we're going to make some other changes. You can just make a step back, make sure your business is stable, and then make some other changes, but always judging the impact of those changes. So why are process maps essential? The second reason is business improvement. It's a key element. So you're not just making ad hoc changes. You're not making, uh, you're not just doing things because, you know, it feels right. You're doing things because you've documented it, because you've you've uh, visually tested it. Uh, conversation I had the other week was about um, customer journeys. Customer journeys are very much a, a process map uh, format, a process map style because it details how the customer interacts with your business, how it moves, how they move through your business, what are the um, the touch points between yourself and the customer and them, and then what is it that they expect at the end? What is it that they, what service level are you, ex are you expected to give them? Where do you actually finish off? Or if you've got opportunities, just keep with that customer. Now, all that will be created as a process map, as, as actual steps and decisions and inputs and outputs. And that very much similar to this, you can create the virtual journey first of how you want the customer to impact and base your website off it, uh, base your communication, uh, your text messages, your automation of emails, when, when, when phone calls are critical. And then once you have that live and you see what works and doesn't work, then you can modify that customer journey to improve the customer's relationship. And that's the exact same as the business improvements. So there's lots of other elements, which I'm not going to get into detail today in terms of the customer journey um, aspect of it. But there are lots of use cases with the businesses we're having processes and having steps 
detailed out is a critical element to how your business should be functioning. So what's the final reason? Well, right at the beginning, we made a decision to follow Bob or Bobby's story. And Bob is still there. Bob is actually uh, somebody that's came directly from school. He's got a background in IT. He's uh, doing some courses uh, for document control, and he doesn't want to go to the office world. He wants to uh, stand alone. He's going to create a business from scratch. He's got a bit of money um, behind him. So at the age of 21, 22, he's going to go into business. He's going to strike out. And 18 months later, he's actually quite successful. He's, 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 you know, he's expanding and he's got three staff, but he's not right in that process perhaps because he's uh, quite impulsive in terms of the way he interacts with things. And he's just going to explain verbally to his staff and how things want done. He's going to keep a tight rein and, he, you know, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to have that standoff. Now he's noticed his local area that the Bobby's doing a very similar job. And he's also noticed that he's lost a few, quite a few clients recently to Bobby. And he's not entirely sure what it is that she's doing. From, from the outside, it looks like she's doing very similar things to him. They're in the same sort of networking areas and they're in the same sort of um, same sort of circles. But she seems to be winning the work and he isn't. Now, all the things we talked about, Bobby applies to Bob. He's a unique person, unique background, slightly different um, education, slightly different age. Things are unique about him. And he would have gone to courses, but he would have got the same marketing courses as Bobby. And even if he did go to the same courses, he's going to have a different outtake. He's going to take things out and, and identify other things as important. And he's going to have his own spin on things. So, even though they do the same business, their processes are going to be different. Now, Bob isn't happy that he's losing these clients. And so Bob goes online and finds out that all three of Bobby's staff in this fictional world that we're now creating, like Bacon. And so Bobby, so Bob, steals Bobby's staff by offering the baker sandwiches every morning and a higher wage. Bobby seeks out some new employers after uh, unexplainedly losing hers, and she gets the same people that Bob had. Fictional world. But Bob and Bobby have basically now swapped employees. Now, something you will hear a lot of people say, a lot of standard um, assumptions are that it is the people that make a business. So because Bob and Bobby have swapped people, does that mean that the process is swap? The answer is no. You see, Bobby's still got a process maps. So even though she's got three people with some experience in this industry, she's still going to train them on the process map. They may bring in some new, some new information that she hasn't considered before, but on the main, they're going to be following her processes. They're going to be, you know, she, there might be some bad habits, some other changes that she is going to um, dictate, and she's going to make sure that they're following her processes. On the flip side, Bob isn't just going to let people um, do what they want. He had a tight rein on his previous employees. He's not going to change that significantly. And although there might be things that they could teach him in terms of how he's doing, they're not going to bring the process maps. They're not going to be bringing those, the, the exact steps that Bobby would do with them. They're going to follow Bob's instructions. They're going to, as best they can, with the process maps. And all this relates to the fact that the process maps for people working day in, day out, don't feel that important from people on the floor. They're something that they reference on occasions. they something that they use during training. But from a whole, they're just doing their job. And once they know what their job is, until the point where they come across something that isn't standard, and for Bob's, they'll have to go to Bob and go, Bob, what do you do here? 
or they make assumptions and can say, well, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to do this. On the other side, of Bobby's side, they're going to have the process back to rely to. People aren't the business. What the business is, is the processes. It's the things that we do. Why do people say that? Why do some think that people are the business? It's because of culture. Culture is an important part of what retains staff. It's the things that you remember. Um, it's the conversations you have about family, about what you did at the weekend, about sports teams. You remember that far more than you do the day-to-day, minute-to-minute working that you're doing. That's The working is vital to the success of the business. The interactions are vital to our own sanity and our own well-being in terms of how we feel about turning up to work every day. But the two are separate. So why are protest maps essential? The number one reason is they represent the business DNA. They are the business. They are the thing that makes that details why the business is successful, why the business does what it does, how it does it. So the three reasons why process maps are essential are training so that your staff can come in or VA or whatever it is and pick up the business fast without, you know, um, without any major issues. They're not working from a blank piece of paper. Business improvement, so that you have a documented um, way of looking at what changes are going to impact your business and also to see how your business has improved over time. And they represent the business DNA. They are the business. They are what the business does and how the business wants to do it. Now, Bobby, she's got a different staff, but she's she's successful. She was never really ever considering about Bob. She's gained some staff back. She's expanded further. Now, when I said that people are the business, there are a few, uh, one major exception to that. As Bobby expands, she's now get to the point of having departments, of having actual departments looking at marketing, all elements, the finances. And Tim here has had a very good um, applement for marketing. And because of that, she's noticed that. Uh, she sent him on some marketing courses. Uh, she sent him on some training. And now she wants to give Tim the opportunity, because of how well he's worked with the business, of running the marketing department, which has just been set up. Now, when Tim is running that department, he is going to make changes to those processes. They're not going to be identical to what they did before. Why? Well, he's now got the experience. Bobby, we always said Bobby was never the marketing person. She did training on it. She did, she's got some lessons learned on it, but it's never been her expertise, which is why she's created a department for it. When we looked at that blank piece of paper before, if I gave it to somebody that understood art and I gave them some instructions because I know that they know that, uh, that field, marketing speak or this particular case, just general object speak. And so I'm not giving them, you know, shapes like trapezium. I'm giving them actual instructions. I want a waterfall. I want a mountain. I want a sunset. I want a tree-lined uh, river. An artist is going to take that and enhance it and turn it into something amazing. The exact same happens when you've got people in your business that have a certain aptitude for uh, for what they do. And so Tim here is going to take that marketing process and he's going to morph it, he's going to change it, he's going to improve it. But one thing to note here is that usually we only work with people that we understand that we have an affinity for. And we usually have an affinity for them because we have a face of the way of thinking. The identical people generally don't think of identical ways but we have an understanding and so although Tim's taken this this department Tim will have a general very similar way of thinking about processes and about department as Bobby so Bobby might want to be involved in terms of some of the changes to the department but there could be very few clashes between them because they have an understanding they have a very similar way of thinking 
And that's how businesses should expand, having that scalability, having that ability to, to grow. And again, you could have the history of the process map of how that functions. So that is the reason why process map should be one of your uh, foundation elements to your business, to any business. As I mentioned earlier, in September, I have got a course coming up, uh, 20th to 24th. We'll be talk taking you through how to make your first business quality process maps, how to actually um, understand what the creation is, what the critical questions are, how you identify those binary decision points, those inputs and outputs. It's a five-day course. It'll be set up in a over Zoom, but also in a private Facebook group. Every morning between 9 and 10, I'll go live, very similar to how I did today. And I'll be giving you elements throughout that week in terms of those improvements that you need to make. Um, no improvements, sorry. I'll be going through that with those weeks in terms of the steps to create your process map. It'll be starting off very simple to actually the creation part towards the end of the week. Those will be recorded and available throughout the day so that you can access them uh, whenever you need. If you can't make the live, fine. And also in the evening between eight and nine, but that'd be more of a discussion. So it would be more um, access to my own unique insights and experiences and also be understanding what it is that your business does, allow me to take the future sessions to help you understand how how that that training relates to your business how that moves on and that those discussions there'll be some breakout rooms there'll be some one-to-ones there'll be some um, elements of group thinking because the more people that tackle a problem the quicker we can come to a solution i always believe that and at the end, there'll be some exclusive offers and there'll be some post trading elements that we will follow through and that Facebook group will be open for probably three months afterwards where we will just be there to help you build on that and WTS will be there with other, as we said, we talk about systems, um, organisation. There's other elements that WTS can help your business with that you'll have access to by joining that course. No process map software will be needed. A uh, computer will be useful because you'll need it for Zoom. Access to Microsoft Office will be ideal because if they have the shapes and things like that, that you use either in PowerPoint or Word. But if you don't have that, that's fine. Pencil and paper will be sufficient. You take pictures and send them to me. And so that is something that you know will work. As I mentioned earlier, I'm running this uh, course direct, uh, throughout August, um, the one you've just seen, the foundation one. So if anyone's just catching the end or would like to be part so they can ask questions, because I'm always open for people to ask questions as we go through these sessions. Then the next one will be on Friday the 20th. And the one after that will be again on a Wednesday. It will be on Wednesday the 25th, the next two sessions. So feel free to join me there. If you have any questions um, about the course, uh, about how to access it, um, I will have the next session um, a, a, a QR code on screen so you can scan it. But Inquiries at warranted.limited. Uh, you can find the events over at Eventbrite under warranted technical solutions. If you've got any issues in terms of the, the cost of the course and you'd like to know if there's any other options, email me directly at ian at warranted.ltd. We can discuss that. Thank you very much for joining me today. And I will uh, be live in the near future. And we will go through this again. And I hope you join me in September. Thank you.